most of you have probably heard someone say before, did you know that we are 50% identical to a banana? And if you're anything like me, you probably thought to yourself, well, no, I didn't know that, but yeah, I guess that makes sense. We are both made of DNA and we both carry out many similar processes at the cellular level, animal cells and plant cells. So sure, checks out. But where exactly did that figure come from? And do we really share 50% of our DNA with the popular fruit? What do you say we monkey around and find out? Comparative genomics involves comparing the genetic makeups of two or more organisms. This can be a comparison of small regions of DNA or entire genomes. Identifying DNA sequences that have been conserved, that is, preserved in many different organisms over millions of years, is an important step towards understanding the genome itself. This helps us discover which genes are essential to life and can highlight genomic signals that control gene function across numerous species. It also helps us further understand what genes relate to various biological systems, which can in turn translate to innovative approaches for treating human diseases and improving human health. But comparative genomics also helps us figure out how closely related organisms are to one another. This is incredibly useful for many fields, from paternity tests in modern forensics to evolutionary biology. Since a human and a banana are very different species, this 50% number appears to have something to say about the evolutionary history of both, doesn't it? But then how exactly was this number obtained? Comparative genomics is admittedly a bit more complicated than I initially let on. This is because we can compare different types or sections of genetic material and get different percents of similarity. For example, if we are comparing the sections of the genome that deal with basic cellular processes, humans and bananas would be expected to share quite a bit. But if we are comparing the region in humans that codes for, say, sweat production, bananas will probably have no identical genes at all. This means an excellent way to draw evolutionary connections is by comparing full genomes so that the entire suite of genetic information can be contrasted. This point can be especially well made when looking at the comparison of humans and chimpanzees. Chimpanzees have long been thought to be our closest living relative, so prior to the chimpanzee genome being sequenced, it was expected that we would share a lot of our genome with them. It was confirmed in spades when the genome was finished for the chimp in 2005, showing a 96% similarity for the genome when looking at the entire thing, including insertions and deletions, and a 98.8% similarity when comparing just the alignable regions. This is a very close relationship and suggests a divergence time around 7 million years ago. For comparison, rats and mice only share around 95% of their genomes in the coding region, and even less so when non-coding regions are taken into account. But these numbers, of course, seem far less significant when we consider that humans are 50% supposedly identical to a banana, and given humans like us are animals and bananas are plants, we would have diverged 1.5 billion years ago. So what's the deal? 
Well, remember again, it depends on what we are comparing. This shared DNA with bananas could be referring to a number of things. Protein coding genes, non-coding genes, transposable elements, the percent that gets aligned in a whole genome alignment, etc. Each of these specific features evolve at different rates and thus will be more or less conserved between any given species. Genes, or DNA sequences, encode for proteins. Proteins are slower to evolve and change than DNA is due to the redundancy of the genetic code. Thus, proteins are the genomic feature most likely to be conserved between evolutionarily distant species. While it is true that other genomic features such as non-coding regulatory sequences or non-coding RNA can be conserved over long evolutionary distances, they are far more likely to diverge in sequence than proteins are. Other genetic features such as transposable elements or intergenic quote-unquote junk DNA are even less less likely to be conserved, as their sequences are under less selective pressure and accumulate mutations at an even higher rate. So where then did that 50% number come from? What is it referring to? Well, Natasha Glover of Desimov Lab must have had the same question that I did, because she decided to compare humans and bananas herself. She did some alignments using the portions of the genome that she expected to be most similar between the two species, and thus most likely to give that 50% number. Of course, she focused then on proteins. This is because proteins, as previously mentioned, change slowly. It means they're more likely to be conserved. Now, in order to compare all the proteins in one species to all the proteins in another species and see which ones match, Natasha decided to use orthologs. Orthologs are the term that we use for genes in different species species that started diverging due to a speciation event, or a corresponding gene between species. This is where her lab's expertise comes in. Desimov Labs maintains an orthologous matrix, which is a method and database for finding orthologs between many different species. It made her the perfect candidate to suss out whether or not humans and bananas truly are 50% identical. All of the orthology inference methods tested showed a maximum of 25% of human genes being orthologous to banana genes, and a minimum of 17%. Again, these results give the most leeway, as they used protein sequences, which are the genomic elements most likely to be conserved. So then, I guess it isn't 50%, but it is 17 to 25%, right? Do humans really share 17 to 25% of their DNA with bananas? Not quite. Remember, we were comparing DNA that codes for proteins so that we would get the highest similarity, and protein coding DNA makes up only 1% of the entire genome. So humans are 17 to 25% similar to bananas when looking at protein coding genes, but less than 1% identical when looking at all the DNA in their respective genomes. So what do those shared genes, though, really do anyways? Natasha investigated that as well, and found that the human banana orthologs are highly enriched for basic metabolic processes such as cellular metabolic processes, gene expression, and RNA processing. These biological functions are likely key genes which encode for cellular processes essential for all eukaryotic life, which means any mammal, any reptile, any amphibian, any member of the animal kingdom will share approximately the same amount of their DNA with bananas as humans do. So where on earth did this number even come from? This is precisely why citing your sources is so important. Natasha sussed that out too and found that the number came from a single animated video. So when we get to the bottom of it, the 50% number is actually less than 1% when we're looking at whole genome comparisons. And that's all quite fine by me, because kinship to zebrafish and macaques and mice and chimpanzees is much more appealing. Shit right there.